Now I just want to premise this video by saying I'm not claiming to be an expert and I most certainly am not a chemist. A lot of these products that we're dealing with have a wide range of chemical compositions. Once we start adding to them, we're manipulating the VOC. Manufacturers, by law, are required to adhere to certain VOC limitations. Therefore, they cannot recommend certain things to you, even though those certain reducers or additives may be extremely beneficial to the product. So bear that in mind. Now many of the people that are viewing this have way more experience in the field than I do. They may have way more knowledge. Please, if you're that person, feel free to add something in the comments section. If I missed something in the video, if I misspoke, please add it in the comments section. My sole intention with this video is to help somebody who may be a little bit unfamiliar with these different solvents or with the capabilities of just basic oil-based paint to help them get familiar, to help them get a foot in the door. Okay, let's hop into this video. Let's take a quick minute and just breeze through commonly available solvents from our local stores and which ones are good choices for mixing with oil-based paints. Now when it comes to solvents, there are five main categories. Three of those categories are commonly available to us. There are solvents in each of those subheadings that are okay options when it comes to paint or paint prep. The three commonly available to consumers would be petroleum based, alcohol based, and the ketones. Let's start off with the petroleum based, which is going to be the broadest category. A lot of products come from the refinement of crude oil and coal tar. You have products that come from refinement that range all the way from a solid to a gas. A solid being a paraffin wax, for example, all the way up to butane, propane, etc. These will fall somewhere in between those. Let's start off with kerosene, and I would also add into this category gasoline, neither of which I would recommend using for thinning your paint. This is kind of an old school option. Guys back in the day used to use kerosene to cut paint, oil-based paint, and that would help brush strokes flow out, and it can, in some instances, even act as a retarder for the dry time. I would highly not recommend that. I used to know an old school guy that would occasionally use gasoline as a reducer. Definitely would not recommend it. Alright, moving on. We have lacquer thinner. Lacquer thinner is a fairly potent solvent. I probably wouldn't use it to mix oil-based paint, although it would be compatible. It's fairly caustic and it will actually eat through oil-based paint. I would highly not recommend it for reducing your paint. Although it can be a decent option to keep around as a cleaning agent. Okay, next we have paint thinner, also known as mineral spirits. Now if you look at the chemical composition, there may be a slight variation. As far as we're concerned, they're the exact same thing. Paint thinner is kind of an old name. When you had one type of paint and one type of paint thinner, well, as time's gone on, we've got a lot more products available to us and they've kind of gone to calling it mineral spirits because in essence all of these are paint thinners. So mineral spirits, this is a good option for paint reduction as well as for job cleanup. Now this is going to leave a little bit of an oily residue if you're using it to pre-clean your metal. It will not evaporate super quick. I would probably rank this as a mid-range reducer. This will give you the slowest flash time, but it will give the paint the most amount of time to flow out, whether you are spraying or brushing. Naphtha. Now naphtha is very common. I would say paint thinner and naphtha are probably the two most common petroleum-based reducers. This would be a mid-range reducer. It's got a somewhat strong odor and it will leave less oily residue than paint thinner, but it will leave a little bit of oil residue. 
So this is going to evaporate quicker or flash quicker. It's going to leave less oil. All right, moving on from naphtha. If you distill naphtha further, two byproducts you will get is toluene and xylene. I wouldn't use these as paint thinners. They're very toxic. You would have to only use them outdoors. They don't have a pleasant odor. And the cost justification isn't there. I don't believe that's a good option. Once you remove toluene and xylene from your naphtha, what you're going to get is odorless mineral spirits. Essentially the exact same thing as regular mineral spirits except for that it's had that xylene and that toluene removed which is what gives you that foul odor. Less toxic, doesn't have an unpleasant odor, can be used indoors. Not quite as strong as regular mineral spirits. Naturally it's been distilled further. Not a terrible option. Out of all of these I'm probably just going to go ahead and buy the paint thinner. I think it's the most versatile and it's going to give me the biggest contrast to my favorite, which we'll get to very soon. Okay, moving on into our next category, we have alcohol, the alcohol solvents. Now there's two that are commonly available, denatured alcohol and methyl alcohol. These are actually the two different types of alcohol. Ethanol, which is the type of alcohol we would consume, and methanol, which is not safe for human consumption. This has been poisoned so that it is not a consumable alcohol, but it is ethanol based. Methanol is actually capable of causing blindness in high quantities. It's, it's what the moonshiners were always rumored to go blind from, methanol alcohol. These are more useful in wood related products. I would definitely not recommend using them in any type of oil based paint, but they can be handy to have around for thinning shellacs and for cleaning up when you have a project that may include wood. Okay, and moving on into the last category and my favorite category. Ketones. Acetone and meth. Methyl ethyl ketone. It has been my experience and it is my humble opinion that acetone is king of the solvents. It's the one that I use most often and it's probably the most versatile. This one has the broadest range of things that it will dissolve, that it will clean up and it also is the fastest evaporating and it leaves absolutely no residue. In addition to that, it's not regulated. You can use as much of it wherever you want. MEC in my experiences is not quite as commonly available as acetone. Now while acetone might command a little bit higher of a price, I believe it's worth every penny. Now acetone has a very quick flash or a, or a fast evaporation rate, meaning that if you were using it to degrease a project, a large project, you might have to replenish your reg several times. But when it comes to thinning paint, there's not really any off the shelf solvents that are going to be faster than acetone. All right, one more thing I'd like to quickly touch on. This is available at a lot of my local stores. Painter's Solvent, and it's a replacement for MEC, toluene, xylene, VM and P naphtha. Now VM and P naphtha would be varnish makers and painter's naphtha, or regular naphtha. I don't think VM and P is very consequential. That's kind of another old school term. MEC is actually a ketone, which would fall in the acetone category. Methyl ethyl ketone. I'm not exactly sure what the chemical composition of this is, but they're claiming that it can replace all of these. It might not be a bad option if you see it. I don't know exactly how it stacks up on that chart as far as potency or evaporation rates, but it looks like they're claiming to replace all of the mid-range stuff. So out of all of the solvents that we covered, there's two that are very commonly found in my shop, and that would be mineral spirits slash paint thinner and acetone. I find that these cover all of the jobs that I ever really need to tackle. Now let's quick look at what Rust-Oleum recommends for thinning some of their products. If you look here on the back of the can it does say for thinning do not thin with gasoline, lacquer thinner, turpentine, etc. Now interesting they should mention turpentine. Turpentine is another kind of old 
solvent, not commonly used anymore. It's still used, but it's got a very, a very small window of, of where it is used. Turpentine is actually derived from pine sap. What Rust-Oleum recommends thinning with, acetone only. Now, whenever you're dealing with this many different types of chemicals, one thing to always keep in mind is compatibility. Nothing will ruin your day quicker than having two incompatible chemicals sprayed onto a job. You'll have problems like lifting, blistering, fisheye, etc. It's endless. So, if you're ever unsure about the compatibility of any different types or combination of solvents and paint, along with other additives such as Catalyst or Japan Dryer, Google. Google, if you can't find a clear answer, then probably shy away and go to a different route. Now remember, this is all stuff that I've learned through trial and error. A little bit of experience, doing some research here and there. Stuff I picked up when I went through spray refinishing school. So take it for what it is worth, and it's probably only worth what you paid for it. But if you know anybody that can benefit from this information, please share the video. If this helped you out in any way, give it a thumbs up. And if I missed anything or you have anything to add, please put it down in the comment section below. Have a great day and we'll see you on the next one.